Welcome to the channel. My name is Paul. I'm the owner and operator of Drift Trike Fab. Today we're going to be covering how to put this, uh, put together our most popular kit, which is our 26 inch uh, Drift Trike frame kit. We're going to be covering uh, material specifications, amperage settings, uh, notching the head tube, and much more. So stick around. Okay, material specifications. The material used in our kits is inch and a quarter by 120 wall mild steel tubing. All of our kits are cut on our CNC plasma tube cutting machine. After all of our parts are cut out, we're gonna head over to the welding table and get ready for prep. Okay, with all of our materials cut, we're gonna take a look. These are our uh, foot peg arms right and left. We've got our handbrake mount. We've got two foot pegs, four cross tubes, a head tube, the side wings, and last but not least, the main frame rails left and right. Okay, our first step is going to be grinding the mill scale off our handbrake mount. The next step is to go through and chip off all the dross using a welder's hammer or just a regular hammer works just fine. Okay, now that we got all of the dross chipped off of our parts, I like to go through using one of these Scotch-Brite pads to kind of scuff up and clean all the intersecting tubes. Um, you really want to make sure this uh, material is clean if you're going to be TIG welding. It makes your life a whole lot easier. All right, now let's go through and wipe down all of our parts using either acetone or alcohol. Make sure you don't use brake cleaner. If you use brake cleaner, it is toxic when you weld, so uh, just be mindful of that. Okay, with all of our material clean, we're gonna be moving on to cutting out the templates for notching the head tube. Uh, take note how I'm leaving a little bit of meat on the template and I'm also going to be identifying each template as left and right. Uh, this will make a little bit more sense later in the video as uh, I'm showing you how to notch the head tube. Alright, now we can get into setting up the frame to start welding. Now you don't need a expensive welding table. Uh, it does help, but uh, I would have actually done this tutorial on the ground if I didn't have uh, vinyl flooring. But uh, as you can see, I'm just clamping it down. Uh, right there, I'm marking uh, one inch from the back end and you'll kind of see why uh, as I give you a better view. Okay, here's a little bit better view. Uh, I like to come in here and make a mark at about 10 inches uh, for the motor mount plate. Now this measurement can be played with a little bit depending on how long your plate is. Uh, I also made a, a one inch mark from the end of the tube and you can kind of see where that cross member sits. Um, and then I use the side wings to kind of butt it up against that and kind of have like a nice flow through look on the frame. Now I'm just coming in and tapping it into place. Doesn't take much. Now 
And now for this cross tube, I'm just gonna tap this and kind of line it up with the edge of the side wings. Okay, grab the fork head tube, and we're going to make a mark at two inches. Now that we got that marked, we're gonna head over to the drill press. Okay, we're going to be drilling a 21 64 hole. This is for a zerk fitting, so that way we can grease the front fork. Now that we have the hole drilled, now we're gonna tap it with a 1 8 by 27 tap. And here I'm just testing the zerk fitting. Okay, let's move on to tack welding the frame. I'm gonna be using a MIG welder uh, set at about 120 amps. It's inch and a quarter 120 wall tubing, so it should work pretty good. Uh, make sure you kind of got it all jigged together using clamps or whatever you have in your garage or in your shop to uh, just make this process go a lot smoother. All right, let's move on to marking the notch for the head tube. I'm taking the right side template and wrapping it around the tube. Uh, it makes it really easy if you tape it. Uh, I just held it there in place and I'm also making some marks to better explain the rotation angle at what this template has to be set at here in the next clip. Okay, let's move on to notching the head tube. For demonstration purposes, I marked the end of the tube. Now, the one I'm touching right now is the right side, so we're going to take the right template. Um, if you're looking at the top mark, that indication is uh, zero. The nine o'clock position is going to be 90. The six o'clock position is going to be 180 and then 270. So the blue line on the template right there, we're gonna try to set that at about 115 degrees. Okay, with the right side set at 115 degrees and the left side set at 245 degrees, we can kind of get an idea of what the uh, notch is supposed to look like. So you can kind of test fit it with the fork head too. Okay, once you get both templates set in place using a Sharpie or a paint marker, just transfer the template. Here's a handy little tip. Take one of those adjustable clamps and reverse the heads on it and use it to spread the two main frame rails apart so that way it's easy to notch the tube. Okay, we'll just go in with the angle grinder and notch the tubes. And off camera, I went in with a 40 grit flap disc and uh, cleaned up those tubes. And here is the test fit for the head tube. You don't have to have the zerk fitting sticking out like that, I just like it to be easily accessible. And the recommended rake angle is 60 degrees, but uh, that's close enough. And now I'm gonna be mocking up the left foot peg arm. I'm gonna set it at about seven inches. And we'll just go ahead and tack that in place.
All right, next is the foot peg. I like to set an angle finder on it and get it as level as possible. And once that's level, we'll go ahead and tack it in place. And now I'm just going and repeating the same steps for the right foot peg arm. I'm taking careful measurements to make sure that I've got everything nice and symmetrical. And once I do, I'll get it tacked in place. Another good tip is to place your tacks uh, where they're easily accessible to cut off if you need to move the part. And here we're just leveling out the foot peg. Again, it's the same as the left side. Uh, once you get that done, just go ahead and tack it in place. Okay, onto our final step, which is installing the handbrake mount. Now I advise you to put this on the left side. It doesn't matter if you're right-handed or left-handed. The reason why is the uh, throttle cable is usually located on the right-hand side. Um, so you wanna be able to drift around corners while, while pulling the handbrake and pushing through the throttle. And it's really hard to do if you have the handbrake mount on the right side and the throttle on the right side. So just keep that in mind. All right, and the final step is just tacking this in place. You're gonna to wanna to go through and fully weld the frame, but I advise you not to do so until you get all your parts mocked up and put in the places that you want to. So if you guys like these videos, give us a thumbs up, and then also subscribe to our channel, and we will see you guys on the next build. Thanks for watching.